Hello and welcome back to the channel. It's Mark from PowerSonic. I hope you all had a brilliant Christmas and New Year. By the time this comes out, it will be 2022. At the minute, it's one day somewhere between Christmas and New Year. I don't know about you guys, but I lose track of what day and time it is um, in that weird period between Christmas and New Year. I am unlucky enough to be out working, so I'm out doing a few bits and pieces. I'm with the A team today, Matthew and Nathan. We're doing a hot tub supply and swapping out a consumer unit. I'm going to be doing the consumer unit. They're going to be outside doing the hot tub. I'm going to do um, a voiceover and chat through the consumer unit installation because a few of you have asked for that. So we'll go a bit more in depth with that one. See how it turns out on the video. Um, it's an Elucian Skullmore board with SPD and RCBOs. So we can talk about that as well. I've also got some of the new Wago connectors, the straight through ones. So we can have a look at them and see what they're like. Um, and yeah, we'll get straight to site, we'll get on with the work and um, catch up with you in a bit. Once it's finished, I'll jump back on at the end of the video and have a little chat about what we've done. And as always, please like and subscribe to the channel, dislike, whatever you want to do. Let me know what you think of the videos, it helps me make better ones for the future. And uh, yeah, I hope you find it useful, let's get straight to it. Okay, so you can see me under the stairs, this was a really small cupboard, there's like the tiniest entry hole possible to get in there. But you can see me just marking up this old board. So this is an old RCD uh, main switch board, which was looking after the kitchen and extension that had been done sort of 15 years ago. And you can see we've got cables entering from the bottom and the top just for extra fun. So this is one of those where you're, you're not going to get a picture perfect result just because of all of the different entry points and the existing lengths of cabling you've got to work with. But that's the old board out there and you can see I've moved on to this fuse wire board here and this is a wooden backed one. Um, somebody had put some gaffer tape on the front because it was actually cracked so this needed to come out and you can see when we've done the test we've got the cables all marked up there just to help us out a little bit at this stage. So this again is PVC cable, it's all in pretty good nick actually to be um, truthful, it just needs a bit better overcurrent protection at the main intake. So that's what we're doing here and we've also got our hot tub circuit to install and because there was no spare ways on anything we would have had to put a third board in. So the customer's just decided to bite the bullet and get the whole lot upgraded to a modern RCBO consumer unit with an SPD. And as you'll see in a minute when I drop it into shot, it, we've gone for the Elucian Skullmore board. These are excellent value and they really are quality as well. So you can see there I've got the, the screws in now, I'm just fixing it to the wall and then I'm going to start tackling entry points into this board because as I said we've got cables coming from above, from below and from the side. It is going to be a bit of a faff this one and I've dropped a bit of trunking in just to tidy up around the consumer unit and to enable me to cover those entry points because I'm using grommets in the top and I'm going to use grommets in the bottom as well as you'll see in a minute. Just to talk about the Skullmore board again, um, they did have a few issues with the first versions that were coming out. So they didn't put um, fixing points in for the tails gland, for example, if you went on to install an SPD. Also that the RCBOs and MCBs didn't tend to align very well with the case cover and the DIN rail. That's all now been sorted. These are really good value. Um, you know, the SPDs are 25 quid plus fat. The RCBOs, I'm getting them for between 10 and 11 quid plus fat. It's an absolute no-brainer and the quality is definitely there now. I wouldn't be installing these if that wasn't the case. So you can see I'm just trying to bring these cables in to the trunking and then get them into the board so we can start dressing away and um, tidying up the installation and seeing if we can make it look something like. I don't like extending cables unnecessarily. It's not something I would ever do just to try and make something look nice. Uh, you'll have seen on some of my other videos, I have produced some pretty decent, neat and tidy boards. And you can do that very easily when you're fitting um, a consumer unit on a rewire, for example, because all the entry points and cable orientations are under your control. You've got plenty of length to play with. Um, but with this, obviously the cables are all cut to length. They're all um, coming into the cupboard under the stairs at the point they do come in. So I'm kind of fighting against that from the beginning and trying not to extend any of these cables unless I absolutely have to and this is difficult to get the footage as I'm sure you're seeing now because obviously I'm right in shot but you can see there the cables are all into the consumer unit now and um, you know they're, they're ready to go there to get the RCBOs in so that tends to be the case when I am doing um, a board change I will pop the RCBOs in one at a time and dress the circuits away as I go Whereas if I was doing um, a board on a rewire, for example, I tend to get all of the RCBOs in 
and then dress the circuits away um, one at a time into those and, and put the earths in at the end just to cover up some of the wiring um, but in this case um, this tends to work out best just for um, really knowing what you've got to extend and what you haven't that's just my way of approaching it other people tackle this differently i'm sure and there's no right or wrong way to it you all find your own style um, as you develop your skills installing distribution boards and consumer units one of the things i do want to mention is we see these neat perfect boards on instagram very often and i've been guilty of sharing those but the context of that is it's not always like that. I do want to keep reiterating it. It's mainly trying to produce a board that's safe, serviceable, easy to maintain and work on in the future, and that you can identify what everything is doing. You know, it's far more important that you get your termination sound and tight than you have everything in a straight line and millimeter perfect. At the end of the day, you're asking your customers to pay for your time to do that. And you know, it might only take an extra half an hour, but is it really fair that a customer should have to pay that just so it looks um, absolutely banging for Instagram? The truthful answer to that is probably not. Um, so, you know, I, I tend to just get on with the job and make sure I'm uh, as neat and professional as I can be and getting the best value for my customers along the way. So, as I say, this isn't a rat's nest. This is something that's um, neat and tidy. It's serviceable. You can see me dressing the cables away there as I go with the RCBOs. And again, apologies for me getting in shot. This is really difficult because um, obviously I need to be on with getting the, the wires in and um, that's the priority of this rather than having everything watched but you can see me there um, getting the neutral wires dropped away on the RCBOs and making sure I'm careful to get them in the right terminals so there are, they are all numbered on the Elysium boards and they're really clear actually so I'm just making sure they're all going in the right place and again, just speaking about the Elysium board, they do have loads of entry points all the way around. So you've got your tails, glands uh, in the bottom, each side, and on the side elevations as well, and also into the top. And then loads of 20mm knockouts all the way across, so it's um, really easy to bring cables into, which is why I went for it on this job, really, because I knew I had cables coming in from all over the place. And I wanted to give myself a fighting chance of being able to do it as easily as possible. Um, the RCBOs are, um, well, we say double pole, but it's actually, I think they call it um, single pole and switch neutral. So the, the neutral is um, switched. I think that's to do with how they operate. So they would um, open up the line before the, the neutral under a fault, and then when you connect them back into the closed position, they connect the neutral before the line. So they can't call them double pole as such, I think, because of that. But I am guessing... You know, I could be wrong on that. You'd have to ask Skullmore's technical helpline or any of the other manufacturers because they all say the same with these RCBOs. Um, so again, when you do get an operation of these, we were talking about this actually on Twitter the other day with um, the operation of an RCBO that is switch neutral. Does that comply with the intent of the regulations because you have to open the line and the neutral when the RCD, oper RCD operates as part of the regs there? And my interpretation of that is that it does because it is essentially opening up the neutral. It's no longer in circuit when a fault's been detected. So I'd be quite happy with that. But I know some people do like to have a traditional uh, 61008 RCD that when it opens, it's classed as double pole. Um, you know, and both, both ways are valid in my opinion. And one thing you do have to avoid is obviously the single pole RCBOs and um, off the top of my head, Hager, a single pole. So if you are installing those on your um, electric vehicle charge points you also need to have um, some other form of opening up the neutral under fault conditions so you know it's not really um, practical to go installing them you need a separate enclosure with a Hager board where you had that double pole RCBO but you can see here I've got the neutral fly leads away I'm dressing in the earth bar and again keeping it as neat and tidy as possible um, obviously we've done a test on this before the work but when we've finished up there is going to be a test carried out as well because we've got our new circuit going in and we want to make sure we haven't introduced any faults through the course of this work. Um, you may have noticed I brought the earth cable in through one of the grommet holes. I then realised the error of my ways and took that out so I can drop that in with the tails gland at the other side of the board because obviously as we know we should really be bringing that earthing, main earthing conductor in with the tails. Um, I don't think you're ever going to see an issue with that due to eddy currents, but you know it's always a possibility. So 
when you've got the opportunity to install in a way that it's not going to be a problem then you might as well do that I always use the the mini sleeve in so I think it's the two mil sleeve in it could be three mil um, that I get from the wholesalers just to try and keep the earths looking neat and tidy obviously when you've got your your bigger earths in there you're going to need the fatter sleeve in but it keeps it looking a little bit neater around the earth bar and I also use some of those new Wago um, through connectors so they're the lever connectors where um, you know you get the ideal ones already that you push fit um, but these are from from Wago and they are the lever connectors so they're straight through so when you're extending cables in the consumer unit they're absolutely ideal actually because um, you don't have to do any bending round to get your conductors running in the right direction again and on this one I only had to extend some of the CPCs in the end and I'll show you a little bit later in the video um, the way goes at the back of this consumer unit where I have used them um, I got mine from the EU I think they launch in the UK in January so by the time this video comes out this should be available to purchase I utilized Amazon and thought I'd get ahead of the curve and try them out and um, yeah usual Wago quality absolutely perfect um, really simple to use and they do all clip together as well so if you want to put kind of a bank of them um, together you can join them uh, so that's that's helpful but obviously in the application I was using on this job I just needed the odd um, cable extension here and there and they're really simple um, solution to get your cables jointed and then wired up to where you want them so you can see here now I'm getting the tails in I think I'm working on the tails and the SPD so the SPD kit from Skullmore comes with the the cables you need to make your terminations but they're not pre-wired into the main switch at present I don't know if there's going to be an option for that off the shelf that would be useful from Skullmore to save um, electricians faffing around with those but you can see I'm getting those in now so we've got the SPD all wired up the tails in the board ready for our Mr Meter man to come and connect these back in for us so they came and made the isolation from the old boards pre the works and then we get them back later on to come and energize um, we don't faff around with any of that see they're just checking the bus bar and at this point i haven't realized that i need to strip out a couple of the um, mounting posts off the bus bar because of the spd so this comes as a 17 way board i believe no 16 way board and by the time you fit the SPD, obviously that drops it down to 14 way. So you just need to take a couple of those off. And I forget every time. So that's um, something I have to revisit. But there you can see the finished article. So we've got the SPD in there at the end. And that wires straight into the main switch. There's no overcurrent protection needed for that. And all the RCBOs, you can see the grommets in the bottom there. And also the grommets are in the top, but you can't see them. At the minute there's the tail gland there, the trunk in top and bottom, so that's a neat tidy outcome I think based on the length of cable I had. You can also spot those Wago connectors I was mentioning in the back of that board. This is it, we've just labelled it up with the um, labels that come with the kit. Um, we're going to go over those with our label printer specific to what the circuits detail. And you can see I put five years on that board just because of the age of the wiring. This is the hot tub circuit outside, so the guys were on with that while I was busy inside. They've cleated the supply cable up the wall, run it across the top of that extension. So you can see there's already some interesting um, drainage works going on there and the overhead supply comes in across there as well. So we tried to keep out of the way of all of that and make it as neat as possible. The hot tub's on decking, so I'm not particularly concerned about using the PME earth outside. So I'm making use of that on this start install. There's no earth rod going in. And you can see we've left a coil of steel wire armor cable ready for the hot tub installers to work with. And a G-Wiz isolator on the wall there that we've um, left in the off position. We're also going to lock off the MCB on the inside so the customer can be safe until we've finished. Hi, right, so I'm back at the office now. That was a pretty straightforward one in the end. I thought it would be harder than it was. Um, you're never quite sure how it's going to dress together when you're taking out two boards and putting a new one in. We went for a bit of trunking. Came out good in the end, I think. Let me know what you think in the comments. We're at it. I thought we'd have a little look at the wooden back board. So I spoke about these on the Consumer Unit podcast I did with Rick and Neil. These are quite common. Um, we take loads of these out all the time. So they used to be made of timber. Um, and then your fuse wires. The This one did have the Bakelite board on the back. So that goes on the wall and sits between the wooden enclosure um, and the wall surface. These are sometimes missing, um, but this one had it on, which was nice. 
Uh, and then again, someone's gone and this was doing a shower, which is a little bit naughty, really. Um, you know, I would have preferred to see RCD protection. It was a newish install. But now it's all gone. We've got the Illusion board on there. And, um, yeah, pretty impressed with those. So, um, you know, I think they did have a few gremlins in the first versions of those boards, but all ironed out now. I'm a massive fan of that board. The lid goes straight on. The MCBs and RCBOs don't sag. They've got the two mounting positions in place now for the SPD. They really have listened to their installers and made changes after the feedback that they were given when the product first came to market. So that's nice to see that they are reactive and responsive to that. Um, and yeah, I think they're a really, really good solution um, for your customers, especially the price point. You know, the SPDs are 25 quid plus VAT. The RCBOs, 10, 11 quid plus VAT. They're actually absolutely blowing everybody out of the water on pricing and the quality is there as well. So massive fan with those. I hope you also like the, the Wago straight through connectors. They are out in January in the UK. I actually got mine off Amazon. So they were um, released in Europe already. And um, yeah, I ordered some through Amazon and got a little early sneak preview of those. Very impressed. Usual Wago quality and great to have the straight through um connection especially when you're in a consumer unit and you've got some annoying earth that need a bit of extension as you will have seen i had earlier on in the video they help tidy that up and keep it neat as possible as always with those consumer units where you are wiring up um, existing installations especially when the wires are coming from above below the side they were coming in from every direction and you're trying to not increase the number of terminations just to make a work of art i'm, I'm a big advocate of not doing that if you want, you can obviously extend all the cabling and dress it away, neat as anything, but you are creating a whole new connection point somewhere else that you don't need just to have it looking nice. You can make it serviceable, make it look decent, easy to test and work from in the future. That's your primary objective. Your customers aren't paying you to produce artwork. Well, mine aren't anyway. So I hope you found that interesting and insightful. Um, get involved in the comments as always. Let me know what you think. If you have made a big mess of something, please feel free to tell me. It is there for constructive criticism as always. Um, if you have any questions regarding the components I've used or any of the tools, let me know. I'm happy to answer them. I love getting involved in the comments on these videos. Have a brilliant new year. Well, you already will have done by the time this comes out. Let's hope 2022 is a good one for all of us. And... Um, Business picks up, COVID goes away, and we can have a fantastic period of normalness. <laughs> so I'll catch you all in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.